what would Tom Schultz do if he'd started out with a modern guitar processor that, like we have today? Probably something very different than what he did. I uh, stumbled on this thread going through YouTube videos like I normally do, and uh, I never realized that the Hysteria album was actually recorded using Rockman modules. Um, and once I learned that, it was a duh. Well, of course it was. Uh, you can hear it all over the album. But watching this one video where he pulled up that clean tone, and I remembered what that unit sounded like, and I thought, well, how hard could it be to replicate this tone in a Helix? And so to kind of give you an idea, this is the clean tone that I was looking to get. Just very crisp and clean. Um, it brought back a lot of really great memories. And there were several people that had made Rockman patches or Hysteria-like patches, and they were close, but it didn't just quite have that bite that I was looking for. Uh, so I thought, well, I'll do what I do best. I'm going to reverse engineer this sucker. We're going to science the shit out of it and figure out how the Rockman works so we can replicate it inside this awesome processor that we have. So the journey for me started with, ironically enough, the U.S. Patent Office. Um, and if you read through the patent descriptions, it's got everything. Block diagrams, uh, a little bit of schematics. He doesn't give the whole secret away. But what he does do is tell you exactly how it works. Now, what I wanted to find out is I know that the secret to the Rockman tone, and really anything that Tom Schultz did, was really gain staging and EQ. He used a lot of EQs at various points in his signal, uh, and he had a lot of scientific reasons why he did that. This patent explains a lot of that theory of why the EQ was done and how it was done in certain places. So that kind of gave me the key to pulling up, you know, the actual Rockman schematics and understanding what was the signal chain that made up the sound. Now, the Rockman X100 had basically four canned tones that you could get out of it. You could get your straight-on distorted dirty sound, an edge tone that gave you a nice kind of breakup when you hit it pretty hard, but then you could roll back the volume and kind of play it semi-clean, and then two clean tones. Uh, clean one sounded like you were going through an amp. It had a little bit of that speaker emulation kind of sound. And then clean two, which was just that very 80s clean compressed guitar tone. So that's the tone I wanted to start with. So as we look through the schematic, one of the critical pieces of the Rockman X100, the preamp and distortion area, the other piece is the EQ1 and EQ2 areas. So EQ1 is what he refers to in his patents as the complex EQ, and it's actually three-stage EQ uh, that emulates like a speaker cabinet. Uh, EQ2 is what's actually used on the clean channel. So I broke this down into a couple sections um, so I could realize what components made up the clean tone. And it was really very simple. So clean two, which was the uh, patent mode number four, really had this pre-EQ and it was just a high pass EQ. It went from five kilohertz and it dropped anything lower than five kilohertz at six dB an octave all the way down. Um, compressor was just a very basic uh, compressor circuit. Uh, kicked in at, uh, at a couple milliseconds. It had a 50 millisecond release. Uh, no, no, nothing you could change on there. Uh, there was a, another high pass EQ, which was just a, another mirror of the 5 kilohertz high pass. And then on the outside of the compressor, they made up for that roll off by adding a low boost, which brought back the low end that you took away before you compressed it. So knowing that, I went back to the Helix to see what we could create. Well, this is, this is where we learn that the Helix, it doesn't have a very granular EQ. You can pick out different EQ models and they're, they're based on real models. All of them are good but not good enough to build that same EQ profile that he had. So my first shot at it um, was a patch that looked like this. I actually created 
several different EQ stages, um, and then in a compressor, two more EQ stages, and these were all really, they, they band together to try to create th those curves that he used in his patents. Um, and it was close, but it, it wasn't close enough. I mean, it's, it sounds, you know, it sounds somehow lacking uh, compared to, which sounds to my ears extremely close. I probably wouldn't be able to tell you a, an old Rockman from that tone. So how do we go about building these EQs? So let's, let's go back and actually look at what these two EQs look like. I went into a program called Circuit Lab. Yeah, this is how geeky I get. I actually recreated the Rockman schematic that uh, between what was in the patents and what was actually on the production schematics. I pulled this into Circuit Lab and I recreated just the preamp portion and the complex EQ portion. So I pulled this. So I wasn't really concerned about the chorus. I wasn't concerned about the reverb, uh, the mixer, all that stuff. I really just wanted to look at what was making this tone and then breaking it down. In the clean mode, we're really looking at two EQ curves. Before we go into the compressor, we have this curve here. So what this curve here is doing, this is your pre-EQ, and this is a what he calls a 5 kilohertz roll-off. Um, the graph really doesn't do it justice. It does knee off at, at 5 kilohertz and rolls down at about 6 dB per octave. And you can see that it drops off significantly at the very low end at, at uh, 20 hertz. You've dropped at 60 dB, so this is a significant low-end roll-off. Um, you wouldn't think you would want to do this to a guitar signal. But then in his reasoning for it is that by taking out all the low end, the compressor is really working on the part of the audio signal that you hear, which is the mid-range, the mid-high, and the high range. Then when it comes out of that compressor, he compensates by adding those lows back in. So that second low boost is really, it's an interesting uh, filter. Um, below 50 hertz, it's flat. Um, between 50 hertz and 400, it uh, it comes up at about 4 dB an octave, and then after 400, it's flat. So it kind of gives you this this low boost to compensate it back up. So this is what I endeavored to build inside the Helix. I could get close by building several stages of EQ and stacking them together, but even so, it wasn't quite the same. So how did I actually get this EQ. So this comes down to impulse responses. So what I did is I used a program called a Voxengo Deconvolver to create impulse responses of the EQ curves. So you create a test tone, which is a sweep signal that goes from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz that you can then use to profile your equipment. So I created those and then pulled, in, pulled them into Adobe Audition. And these curves sound like this. It just runs through the whole audio range. You don't want to listen to it. It's horrible. So then um, I went into the effects uh, and the filters in Adobe and created curves that match what was done inside the Rockman. Um, so we'll pull up uh, the scientific filter. So the Rockman pre-EQ rolls off at 5 kilohertz and rolls down. And it goes off the scale because we actually want this thing to drop off at around 60 dB when it gets down to 20. Um, so once we apply that, we get this. Now our, you see all the low end is rolled off and we're left with a high end. Same thing with the, the low EQ. I use the filters. I use the FFT filter. I created a low boost profile that was flat from uh, 400 hertz forward. It boosted up to 50 and then stayed flat there. If you apply that, this is the result. So creating an IR is really rather simple. You, you run those filters on your source material and then you save these as new waves. Then you go back into Vox and Go, you process those and it creates an impulse response file. That file can then be pulled into your Helix and I've added them in here as Rockman Pre-EQ and Rockman Low Boost and added to your signal chain. So I added, so going back to my new preset, 
I created an IR. I just, uh, since I'm not doing reverbs, I don't need the full um, 2048. I can just use the 1024 because it's just doing EQ. Uh, and I selected the pre-EQ. So what we're doing is we're coming in from the guitar. I actually have a simple EQ on here that's not doing anything. I'm just using it for a volume boost because the impulse response is actually cut a lot of volume out and it doesn't give you much ability to boost them back up. So I'm using this as just a pre-boost. It's not coloring. So I go into my pre-EQ, which gives us that initial roll-off curve that we have, this one in orange where we're just slowly killing everything uh, below five kilohertz. We run into a compressor set to, uh, for a four to one ratio, a pretty fast attack at two milliseconds and a release at 50 milliseconds as specified in the patent. You'll notice I add a lot of uh, level at the end of it. Again, the signal is pretty low coming in here, so I'm gonna bring it back up because we're not going through an amp sim, a cabinet or anything. We're just using these and then we're going out. So we come out of the compressor, we go into our second impulse response, which is replicating that Rockman low boost, which is this curve here. So it's now applying this low boost curve after we get out of this compressor. And then from there, we go down to path two, where we have just our simple chorus. And then I added a plate reverb to replicate the Rockman reverb. And I'm not too concerned about that. I was really more concerned about the tone. So that's how I created this thing. Um, I know most guys are using their ears to try and create this, and I saw a lot of really good analysis out there of uh, folks that were kind of weighing out EQ curves and what uh, Tom Schultz did, but it's all in the patent. If you actually go back and reverse engineer that patent, um, you look at those filter circuits, you run the calculations on them, and you find out what those curves are, you can recreate that yourself. It's a fascinating world digging in through patents, but it's surprising how much detail they will give you about a piece of equipment that uh, you didn't know was there. That's it. Have a good evening.